stitching on the machine is done using the inside edge of the presser foot of the guide. Hello humans, I am the constructor of garments, the maker of masks, the master of snake style, Ophidian. And we are here today to show you how we make trunks. Hey there, guys! F*** this guy! I'll be your mommy. Ah! No! Like, the kind you wear in a wrestling ring. Wow. 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 The trunks we are going to talk about today are based on a design by at Kiramex on Twitter. You should give them a follow. That were redesigned by our in-house champion, Kate Nix, for Razor Wing. Now the way that we construct these trunks in this video is how we do it here at Closet Champion. There are many different ways to make a set of trunks, but this is how we chose to do it for this specific client. So grab your scissors and your design. Let's cover your crotch. In this video, I will be using patterns made by my wife and business partner, Kate Nix. Scissors, straight pins, spray fabric adhesive, magnetac fabric glue, one and a half inch woven elastic, a bodkin to thread the drawstring, chalk, a water or air soluble fabric marker, thin twill tape, four way stretch milliskin spandex with and without holographic foil coating, a scrap of upholstery vinyl, one quarter inch braided elastic, a serger, and our industrial zigzag machine. You can also use the zigzag stitch on your home sewing machine, of course. We begin by cutting out the base to our trunks. These patterns were intended to be lined up on the fold, so I'm making sure to line the edge of the pattern as close to the edge as possible before tracing and cutting out pieces for the front and back. Kate made some markings here to help line up the applique later, so I'm marking them with chalk as I go. Next, we cut out the designs, what we call applique, for our trunks. For this, we choose two tones of gold holographic foil dot spandex. We like to use this type of spandex because the large size of the dots means a larger surface area for the foil to stick to. This increases the longevity of the shine over time. Eventually, every piece of gear is going to lose its luster. So, we try to use materials that last as long as possible. Another way we add longevity to our pieces is by lining them. The foil breaks apart a little more each time the gear is put on or removed, so we reduce the stress on the sparklier materials by lining the piece overall. To line the base of these trunks, we spray adhesive to attach them to this bizarre fabric we found on clearance. It helps to have a couple of pieces of scrap paper to cover the areas you don't want to get sticky when you're using the adhesive. Once the trunks are lined and cut out, we use more spray adhesive to attach our applique. Remember those chalk marks we made earlier when cutting out the base? This is when they come in handy. The marking helps ensure the applique is lined up as evenly as possible. After everything has been solidly glued down, it's time to head over to the zigzag machine to seek more permanent attachment methods. When sewing down your applique, it helps to find some kind of guideline on your presser foot. I like to line the edge of the applique with the inside lip of the presser foot here. Your goal is to encase the edge of each applique piece in your stitch, with the needle entering the fabric on the right side just barely off the edge of the applique, and the needle entering the fabric on the left side solidly through the applique itself. Don't forget to backstitch at the beginning and end of each applique, as well as on any corners and thin spots. Once your applique has been firmly attached, you can finally sew some actual seams. 
So many people don't realize that the designs go on the pieces before they get put together, not after. We first pin our project right sides together, like always. Then we use our serger to sew up the sides and finish off the raw edges. If you'd like to know more about what a serger is and what it does, you should check out the video we posted a little while back about sergers on our YouTube channel. This next part is hard to understand, and it's something I haven't yet mastered myself, so I leave it to my wife. Here, you see her pulling the thin elastic slightly taut as she stitches it to the edge of the leg opening, pulling tighter along the side and back of the trunks and leaving more slack in the elastic along the front. No pins, just pure raw instinct. After she's done attaching the elastic, she sews up the crotch seam to uh, blah, 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 blah. After she's done attaching the elastic, she sews the crotch seam together. Then flips and pins the hem of the leg opening, effectively enclosing the elastic she just sewed down. Once the hems are pinned, they are top stitched using the zigzag machine. Once we finish that, we flip and pin the leg openings. And of course, follow that up with some more stitching. For the waistband, we first cut a piece of elastic that's 2 inches shorter in length than the waist measurement of the client. To form it into a loop, we overlap the ends of the elastic and pin them together, then sew a square where the elastic overlaps. We then use a technique called quartering to pin the elastic to the top inside edge of the trunks. We fold the elastic in half and half again, marking each point with a straight pin. Then do the same to the trunks. By matching up the pins, we evenly distribute the elastic around the waistband. Next, stretch the elastic until it just touches the spandex, but the spandex isn't being overstretched. And then place pins along the waistband as needed. Once the elastic is pinned down, we sew a single basting stitch about half inch from the top edge all the way around the waistband. Sometimes we forget to do this bit before we put on a waistband. So now we are attaching a small piece of upholstery vinyl to the lining of the trunks between the elastic and the lining. Be careful not to glue it to the elastic. This will be our access point for the drawstring casing later on. After the vinyl is attached, the waistband is folded over and pinned down, then top stitched on the zigzag machine. This can be difficult because you are determining the edge of the waistband by feel, but it is the second to last step on your path to making a set of wrestling trunks. The final step is to thread a drawstring through what is now a drawstring casing. We use some thin twill tape 
cut about three times the waist measurement of the client. Kate is using a tool called a bodkin to make the process go faster. Now, your trunks are complete. Kaka! So that's it. That's how we made these trunks. If you want to watch the full three hour stream of us constructing these trunks, you can check it out on our YouTube channel right here where you might already be watching this video. You, I'm sure, have questions more than we can answer in the comments of this YouTube video. So you should join us over on patreon.com slash closet champion where you can get access to our discord and ask myself, Kate, or any of the other makers in the discord how to make things like these trunks or this mask. You can also get patterns for stuff like masks, boot wings, and all kinds of other cool stuff over at closetchampion.com slash merch. Thank you and goodbye, humans. Peace. Yes.